Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. Today we're going to whip up a few simple ingredients using things right off the tower. That is a question I get a lot is how do you eat all that produce and some of it is getting creative and some of it's just embracing that the food that comes off the towers, that's what we eat. We turn a whole cabbage into a meal. So I'm going to do that today. We're going to do a cabbage recipe, shishito peppers. I have a ton of shishito peppers coming off the towers and I'm not sure what else, but let me show you something really cool. So this is my harvest from yesterday and I have this cone cabbage and it's wonderful. It's super, super dense, which I haven't been able to get my ball cabbage, my traditional cabbage to produce this well. So I think this fall, I'm just gonna plant this variety because you know, when you find something that works in your area, go with it. The other thing we grew is gigantic beets. This one's incredibly large. They take a really long time to get this big. Uh, typically, I plant two to three seeds per rock wool. I grow them in my Baby Greens extension kit so that they're not taking up a lot of space because they can take three months to six months. This one's obviously in the six month, six month range. This one's really big. Um, and I'm harvesting them typically smaller so that we're eating faster. And then I'll plant the three seeds so that I can eat one and the others can grow and I can continue that process. This is not something for someone who only has one tower unless you get really good at interval planting then you totally could if you were starting seeds frequently and you're taking one out putting one in and you've got a lot of them going you could totally make it doable but this is more if you have extra space and if you're willing to go the distance a lot of people get very frustrated i think there's a disconnect between what it actually takes to grow food and do beets grow in the ground faster yes it's one of the things in the towers that grows radish too. They grow slower in the towers than in the soil, um, but I can grow them year round. So I'm growing out of season, I'm growing out of their natural environment and I'm getting incredible beets. And you just have to decide like, is it worth it? Our climate's mild here. So I actually grow radishes in a little raised bed and it's better to grow those in there for me personally than to waste space on the tower. And so I'm always like weighing that cost, but beets do terrible in the soil here. I've actually never harvested a beet homegrown out of the soil. So this works for me because I get to have beets. Beets are incredibly healthy for athletes, which I am an athlete. I mean, I don't know if you can technically call me an athlete. I work out a lot and for women my age, so I've just found there's a disconnect with people who aren't experienced gardeners who may be new to this where they get really frustrated because it seems like tomatoes take forever. Tomatoes take forever. Unless you're growing at the peak season in the soil and it, it seems like they come in fast. They don't actually because most if when I'm growing in the soil, if I grow tomatoes, I'm starting those seeds in like early January, a lot of times December, and then I'm waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting until that last frost, and then I'm putting them outside, and then it looks like they grow really fast, but actually they take a while, and then they start to fruit, and then they sit there, and that takes a while for it to ripen, and then they finally ripen and we have tomatoes. Same thing on a tower, I just, I don't know, I think sometimes if you're not used to growing food, it feels like it's never gonna come, and that it takes forever, and the truth is, is food, does take a long time. It takes forethought, it takes preparation, it takes consistency, and the interval planting is what keeps you from the frustration. I'm not worried about how long my beets take because I'm always planting new beet seeds, which means I always have beets on my tower at some stage to grab if I feel like eating beets. Um, so I'm not really sitting there worried about how long it takes or thinking, wow, it's been four months and it's still not as large as I want it, whatever. It's just there and I have it. And so interval planting is the secret to that too. Stay on top of your seeds starting and then you won't remember how long your tomatoes have been sitting there because you'll have other things you can harvest. We need to go grab sushito peppers and I think that's it. Let's go outside. If there's anything else that I feel like is dire that needs to come off the towers, there are a lot of things that need to come off the towers. I have kohlrabi that make this beet look tiny. 
they are gigantic um, but for this video we're just going to keep it to a few simple things and let's dive in so these towers are just putting off a ton of food, but they also need a big cleanup. So anytime we're dealing with growing our own food, making our own natural remedies, doing natural pest control, these things require a huge level of commitment and consistency and patience. And so when you see, I think sometimes people will see the results because you guys get to see the best parts of what I'm doing here. And then when you go live it yourself, it can feel frustrating because your tomatoes aren't ripening or your peppers aren't ready. And it just takes time and it takes starting seeds. Every couple of weeks, I've been mentioning my membership site. Next month is when my interval planting course comes out. Hugely important if you want to be harvesting like I am and not waiting for food and have something you can harvest. The interval planting is how we do that in a way so we're not just staring at some our towers and waiting for them to be ready. All right, there's not a whole lot on that one. And then doing some math too. So I recently discovered that I'm loving having access to all these peppers. I went in the garage just now to see what I could harvest. This is a corbachi. I love these. These taste so amazing. And I don't have enough to eat as often as I like. So I'm starting more seeds and devoting more space to that. And so it's kind of honing in on what do you always want to have access to that's filling gaps and keeping you out of the grocery store and putting the work in to get those things done as well. Look at that beauty. That's a market more cucumber. And if something's not thriving, don't be afraid to scrap it and start over. And when we have seedlings ready to go, it's not so devastating when you got to pull something out because it's not thriving or it got taken over by pests or whatever and putting something new in because we're prepared for that. lots of beautiful shishitos and so my lifestyle classifies as like simple slow living and it's funny because those of us who live this way we're always like wow it's a lot of work to live a simple lifestyle right because we're doing so much from scratch but it is simple and it's slow but I think the key word there is slow living these are small daily commitments that require consistency and they're slow growing food is slow using natural options to deal with big problems is a slow process learning all these skills that's a slow process it's taken me many 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 years to master it didn't come overnight and it didn't come naturally it came through consistent hard work so here's our basket so far i really want some more so we're going to go ahead and just harvest some that are a little bit smaller and this keeps your plants happy actually it keeps them producing uh, we've got so many peppers look at these that is um poblano peppers and shishitos will just put off a ton of peppers it's one of one of the reasons why i grow them because they are replace the grocery store kind of food. A lot of the foods you'll see some, like the beet, are a novelty. They're slow. They take time. I have enough towers I can commit to that. And then some are growing just the maximum amount of food as possible. Because if we eat these a couple times a week, we're not buying something at the grocery store. When it comes to shishito peppers, I have found, right now I have two plants producing really well. I wish I had three producing really well. Um, so, you know, two to three, depending on 
how much you like peppers is a good number to have consistent harvest in these peak months. If you wanna grow them inside and be able to eat peppers a couple of times a week, you would need more like four plants and plant them at different ages so that some are coming in while others are building up to that and then some are resting because they are gonna rest after they produce a lot before they produce again. All right, that is all I'm gonna be able to get today. These are just starting to be prolific. So that will increase too as these mature. I'll get more off. And so a lot of growing food is plant math. Deciding what you like and then honing in on how much, how many plants you need to have to get enough to feed your family consistently. All right, friends, you saw how bright it was. It's so hot, I do not love summer. I'm so glad I didn't have to go digging in a soil bed to get this stuff because that is also no fun and super itchy. Um, and it's another reason I love our cabin. It's the light kind of compensates, but it's really dark in here and it keeps the house really, really cool on these hot days. All right. So I'm making some pasta and that's another thing next on my list so as you grow and you master one you can add the next and homemade pasta is next that is something I have all the supplies to do it and I've dabbled in it but I want to replace those plastic bags that I just threw away um, and have fresh homemade pasta with the best ingredients possible so I'll take you guys along for the journey. If you guys want to be a part of the homemade pasta making. Let's start by getting the cast iron skillet really hot. So we're going to blister the shishito peppers. I'm not washing them. <clears throat> so all we're going to do is get a cast iron skillet, no oil, super, super hot. All right, and if you have extra parts like this, you can juice them. Um, you can cut them and make little like steaks. That's what I'm gonna do. I don't wanna juice today. I've gotta do a big huge juice haul for going away to camp with the youth group next week. So I need to bring my juice for that. So let me show you how to make little like mini steaks out of these. We want to get through this really fibrous part. Um, you can still see there's some right there. When it gets too hard to cut it, that's when we're done. So we only got three, but that's all right. Look at that gorgeous inside. So this, first off we have all of that green, but then we've got this huge um, like meaty part, which is why I wanted to make steaks, steaks out of these. I'm gonna just get a little bit of oil seeped in these. I'm using an avocado oil since I'm cooking these. Maybe a just over a tablespoon for both of them. And what we wanna do is massage that in. So I'm gonna flip it over. And then we're gonna flip them over. And I'm gonna do a little bit on the top, just to drizzle. Coat these. 
Okay, so I'm gonna cook them face down so that they steam a little bit, and then I will flip them over and we are going to uh, kind of brown the tops and let them get roasted. And I am still using my Ninja, but two weeks from now, the stove guy's coming. So super excited to show you guys the new kitchen. It's going to be so adorable. So let's plop these in for 50. Our pasta is bubbling, you may hear that. What we're doing here is blistering these peppers and we're gonna flip them after they blister on one side. They're gonna snap, crackle, and pop quite a bit. Takes about two to three minutes per side, depending on how hot your pan is. This is a, a, just like a burner. When I have my new stove and it's fire gas, they do cook faster. So just kind of test it out. But you can see they're already blistering. We're getting that brown. So let's start flipping a couple of them. We want that in all sides if possible which can be tricky to do with a pepper. Mm -hmm. And these are done. for these to finish them off. Ooh, they smell so good. They're gonna soften. And I like to put a good olive oil on them. I like oil in my food. I know some people do oil free. I like to do light oil and only clean, clean oils, but I like oils. Oh no, well the pan's hot. I forgot I had some I harvested yesterday. All right, now we are going to, this is my Bona Fortuna, real olive oil. Olive oil is, most of it's got fake oils in it, so be very careful. We're gonna drizzle just a little. This is not even maybe like a teaspoon. Those are done. Okay, for this, we're gonna do cashews. I'm basically just making a vegan mayonnaise. We're gonna add some salt. I don't have any lemon juice. I'm gonna add a little vinegar. Oh, not into the cashews container. And some avocado oil, and we're gonna emulsify this. I'm gonna leave all this out because we're gonna tweak it as we go. Oh, Dijon mustard. And I just have this spicy brown, which will work great. Now you can add chickpea water, which is called aquafaba, and make a mayonnaise out of that. It's not my favorite, so we're gonna just play on this for a little bit. In my next video, you're gonna see my new apothecary storage system, and we need to get all this stuff organized. But this, like I was saying, like, if you wanna deal with things naturally, it can require a lot of things, depending on the situation and consistency. amazing it's not emulsifying probably should have added the oil in slowly so what I'm gonna do is put it in my hand blender 
And what I did wrong is I didn't soak my cashews. I forgot that I just put them in dry. So this didn't blend and emulsify very well. But if you want to have it blend to be a little bit smoother, you can just soak your cashews for about eight hours prior. Okay, that did the trick. It just thickened it up a little bit. It just was too watery. Um, and you know, back to like when you do things naturally, sometimes it's a little weird. Oh my gosh, the flavor is incredible. And uh, you saw I'm not measuring, but it doesn't matter. That flavor is literally the best thing I've ever tasted. So we're gonna add garlic to this to make it Olay and try a little lemon because that's what Olay sauce is, garlic and lemon inside a mayonnaise base. And I love plant-based mayonnaise, veggies, but it's not good for you. It just has a lot of stuff in it. And that's how easy it is to make a homemade mayonnaise. Even with the texture a little off and the coloring a little off, that's all you need. And it's I mean, so good, so good. This really up leveled it too. We're gonna also start making our own mustards this year. All right, I'm gonna flip these. You'll see they're getting super brown on top. I'm also gonna turn this to 425. There's not a lot of space between these cabbage and that top burner because this is my oven situation. So let me flip those. Okay, flipped them. Gonna let them continue to cook. Let's chop up the garlic and lemon. went back to being watery but it doesn't matter flavor is what matters all right and if you write up some recipes there's probably someone who will give you the exact ingredients if you want that consistent mayonnaise sometimes I get it it's not today all right this is my medicinal garlic mincer and you don't have to peel the cloves and it just pops it out I'll link this below it's great so let's do four cloves and see what that tastes like. I only have lime juice up here, which may not be exactly what we're going for, but I don't feel like going to the basement. All right, I'm super excited about this. I haven't had any food today. Mmm. The garlic's got a kick, obviously. Put four cloves in there raw. Gosh. So I'm going to add a little bit more lime juice to mellow that out and I'm going to let it sit because as it sits that heat will mellow and the lemon will help it mellow too but this guys incredible so it's probably equal parts nuts to oil some mustard seed, some mustard and vinegar. Blend it and then add your lemon, lime in my case, and garlic. And so when I'm serving dinner, I'm serving it on this table, kind of out all the time, the foods I prep, because we don't always eat at the same time. And a lot of times I'm just, when I have time, I'm preparing food and I'll put it out and it may be eaten for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or everything in between. So we're gonna plate this up, make it look pretty. Uh, this leaf, it has a little brown burn, but I'm not gonna worry about that. We're gonna put our shishitos in here. How fun is that? This is gonna go on the table. And we need to go look for hemp seeds. So we need to go into the long-term food storage area 
and find hemp seeds because there's none in the house, which is weird. I didn't realize we were out. Let's, so let's go do that. Okay, another thing that requires patience and time and practice. This is part of our long-term food storage and we have stuff in the basement. Um, this is in our detached building. So this is like long, long, and I'm gonna be making a whole video on this. And I don't actually know if we have any hemp seeds in here. And I have labels on these that are all ripped, but I know what's in them. And right there, we have our organic hemp seeds. I bagged these in 2020. So airtight and we don't have to go to the store because I already have hemp. Talk about return on investment. I, I could make more doing this than in the stock market because food prices have gone through the roof. Another reason, grow on your own. Save so much money because the cost of food is... I watched a guy do a video and he had his Walmart shopping cart and it was from 2020. It was from four years ago. I don't remember what date. Yeah, so 2020. And it said order again. And so his total was like 125 and he was curious what would happen if he hit order again and what the price would be. And the price was over $400. So this buying in bulk, putting things away, definitely saves money. So these are mylar bags. You just bust them open, you can reuse them. So I will reuse this mylar bag. I just make a pile of them. And you can't reuse the oxygen of the so I'll throw that stuff away. And there's our hemp parts, not even opened out of the original packaging. I'll be making a video on this if you're interested in long-term food storage. Um, you know, people ask if I'm a prepper. I think there's a whole class of the community and I would not fit into that community and all their beliefs. I believe in biblical preparedness and I don't know, I never want to put like the essential things in life, like food and water, in the hands of someone else to control. So this gives us a buffer. It's also really nice to not have to go to the store so I can make anything I want at any time because we have everything here. The tower's providing the fresh food. That's the key because the rest, I buy the meat for the children who eat meat from farmers um, and have that in bulk in our deep freeze and then everything else we just have so we can always make fresh food from scratch. All right, here's our cabbage. Cooked enough where you can cut it through, isn't that gorgeous? And all we're gonna do is take our hemp seeds Sprinkle it on. All right, there we go. There's our cabbage. I drizzled our dressing and put the hemp seeds on it. Smells incredible, looks amazing. I'm just gonna cut this when we're ready to serve it and place it up for anybody who wants it. Thanks for joining me on this homegrown, plant-based, Recipes, I don't know what we call it. I'll see you on the next one.